Hello and welcome back to another video. Today, we'll be showing you exactly how to steam milk for lattes using the Breville Barista Express. The Barista Express is a great entry-level espresso machine. However, because of its slightly slower steaming pressure and single hole steam wand, steaming milk on this machine is slightly different than you might have seen on some other online tutorials. We'll be showing you the exact technique needed to use this machine to perfection. As with anything, practice makes perfect. However, in the case of texturing milk, practice often means lots of wasted milk and a very gummed up steam wand. But it doesn't have to with this one simple trick. Instead of using milk to practice, take your steaming pitcher, fill it up to the normal level just under the spout, this time with water, and add a single drop of dish soap. Believe it or not, Using this mixture will allow you to practice texturing milk without wasting any milk or gumming up your steam wand. Nice! So now that I've shared that one tip with you, let's actually dive into the technique for steaming milk on the Barista Express. Turn the steam on and wait for it to get up to pressure. On some other more high-end machines, you can simply bury the steam wand and crank the steam on full blast. On the Barista Express, you're going to want to wait for it to get up to pressure first. Once up to pressure, quickly switch off the steam, put the wand under the surface of the water, and switch the steam back on. If you do not switch off the steam, you will likely make a mess and immediately introduce very large bubbles. The position you should be aiming for in the pitcher is with the tip of the wand a half an inch away from one of the sides and halfway between the top and bottom of the pitcher. Some people also like to rest the steam wand on the pouring spout to help hold a consistent position. Once the tip is in the pitcher and the steam is on, the first phase of the steaming process involves slowly introducing air into the milk. Right now, you can see that no air is being introduced because the water is still clear. Slowly lower the pitcher until you just start to see air being introduced, and then hold that position. This is another great advantage of using water and soap to practice, because you can visually see the point where the air introduction starts to happen. When you're using milk, you'll need to rely more on sound. This ripping sound is what you're aiming for. This air introduction phase will take longer on the Barista Express than on some other machines. The timing I use is to hold this position until you can feel the far side of the pitcher starting to get warm which will also take longer with real milk than with the water. Once you start to feel the warmth, raise the pitcher back up to bury the steam wand and stop the introduction of air. For the remainder of the steaming process, you want to create what is called a vortex. This phase is equally if not more important than the air introduction phase, and I feel it is something that most people overlook. The vortex mixes in the air and creates that thick, glossy milk texture that you've been searching for. Play with the positioning until you create a large rolling vortex, and then hold that position until the pitcher is too hot to touch for more than a second. Now, some manufacturers actually sell some pretty clever pitchers with built-in thermometers. I'll leave one linked in the description below, but I believe that everyone should learn to feel for their own desired milk temperature. However you do it, once you've reached that temperature, turn off the steam to stop the vortex, remove the steam wand, and if you're using milk, immediately purge and wipe down the wand. Let's run through those steps again at full speed. When steamed properly, you should not be able to see any defined bubbles in your milk. 
and as I'm sure you've heard before, the texture should somewhat resemble wet paint. Don't move on to learning how to pour the milk until you've completely mastered the proper steaming. Practice, practice, practice. And with the tip of using water and dish soap, you now have no excuse not to practice until you have this absolutely perfect. Once you are confident in your steaming technique, it is now time to learn to pour. The one single critical tip for pouring lattes is to get the spout of the pitcher as close to the coffee as physically possible. I mean really close. Go ahead and touch the surface if you want to. Milk will simply not sit on top if you do not get close enough, no matter how perfectly you steamed it. Having a cup with a wide opening and tilting aggressively will help you achieve this. Start your pour by having the pitcher an inch or two above the coffee, pouring directly into the center to allow the milk to drop straight to the bottom of the drink without disturbing the crema. Then, get as close as possible. Again, touch the surface if you really want to. If you don't get close enough, it'll likely look something like this, even with perfectly steamed milk. Get close, and you'll start to see the milk sit on top. Lift the pitcher back up before drawing through the finish, and if you've created a rough, ugly shape, congratulations, you're starting to get the hang of it. Continue to practice until you can make a nice looking heart. And for this video, that's where we're gonna stop. No, we're not gonna get into any complex latte art today. For now, go practice introducing tiny bubbles into your milk, mixing them in with a strong vortex, and getting your spout as close as humanly possible to sit the milk nicely on top of your latte. In a future video, we'll tackle some simple latte art shapes. I hope that this video has been helpful for you guys. I hope that you learned something. And if you made it all the way to the end, please leave a like and even consider subscribing if you want to see some more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.